Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope everyone is doing great. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be like a little chit chat video and I wanted to talk to you today if you are a recent revert or a born Muslim who just recently decided to start practicing the deen in a proper way and is just struggling a little bit to start. Um, because I have been there, or should I say I'm still there? <laughs> so today I wanted to give you a few tips and answer some questions that you guys might have so you don't have to DM me anymore. Because <laughs> I've been getting some questions on Instagram so I kind of just wanted to address them in like one video. A little disclaimer before we get started, all the points in this video are strictly my personal opinion. I am not a scholar or an alima, although I would really want to be one one day, hopefully. <laughs> but if you feel this isn't your cup of tea or you know it doesn't apply to you, then you obviously don't have to listen to me. You can just click out of the video. I am just here to provide some inspiration and some knowledge that I have been trying to learn over the course of my life and hopefully I can share that with you guys. So first, I would like to clarify why I am using the word revert instead of convert. Uh, Muslims actually believe that every individual is born a Muslim and they may change their religion throughout the course of their lives. So let me give you some good news first. If you are a revert, once you have entered Islam, all your past sins are completely forgiven. So your book is wiped completely clean of every sin and the angels are just waiting to write down the good deeds that you will be performing now. On the other hand, if you're a Muslim and you haven't been practicing to your fullest potential, you know, then still don't let your past define you. Do not let your past drag you down where your present and your future are at risk. So the best thing to do here is learn from your mistakes and try not to make the same ones again. And Allah is very merciful. He is very forgiving. So you just have to ask. Something that really helped me build a connection with Allah is when I started educating myself on the foundations of Islam, the five pillars of Islam. Think of it like a house, you know, when your foundation is strong, whatever you build on top will be strong. Obviously, if you have one of the five foundations missing, the house will be likely to crumble more easily. The first pillar is the Shahada, which is the testimony of faith. It is best to take the Shahada with witnesses so that everybody knows that you are now a Muslim. But one day if you're just sitting on the couch and you're like, you know, contemplating life or whatever and you just decide, hey, I want to be Muslim and you take your Shahada, then Allah Ta'ala will be your witness. Isn't that amazing? The second pillar is Salah, which is the prayer that we do. So growing up, I've heard if you don't pray your five prayers, you're not a Muslim or you know, you're a bad person. But now that I'm learning more, I realize that something that differentiates me from a non-believer is simply the fact of worshiping Allah. So I feel like this pillar is probably the hardest for not only me, but many Muslims out there because it requires so much dedication, time, and continuance, you know, you have to establish a routine for yourself. The third pillar is zakat, which is the donation. So zakat is part of your wealth that you must give away for the sake of Allah to someone who is in need of help. This can be for people who need education, who need food or clothing, and so on. So you have to pay part of your wealth to someone that is in need. The fourth pillar is fasting. Now obviously via social media and all these Ramadan routines, you guys would obviously know that we fast during the month of Ramadan. Fasting actually only comes once a year, which is a bit easier to practice compared to, for example, your five daily prayers. So fasting is in the month of Ramadan, as I mentioned, and it is obligatory on everyone except whoever is excused because of their health or any other reasons they might have. That is between them and Allah. The fifth and the last pillar of Islam is Hajj, which is the pilgrimage. So basically you have to go to Mecca at least once in your life uh, if you have the means to do so. So apart from Hajj, actually you can also go for Umrah, which I went last year and it was so much fun. I have a vlog of that, you guys should totally watch it. It's, it was amazing. So yeah, basically just Hajj, you have to go once in your lifetime. My second tip on you know starting off in Islam is starting off with a small circle. Now there are so many people who find it important to shove themselves in your lives asking us questions that we might not even have the answer to. So stuff like what are you studying? When are you getting married? When are you having children? 
you do not have to go around and justify yourself to others of what you do to make yourself feel happy. People always find a way to insert themselves and their opinions onto you. And what I like to do is acknowledge that you've heard it, but also, you know, not being mean to them. So you still do what you think is right within the boundaries of Islam. And of course, sometimes people may give you tips that are helpful to you as well. So choose the people that you associate yourself with very wisely. In the beginning, I would suggest stay away from the Muslim community at first. Um, so you're probably thinking like, Abida, why would I stay away from other people who are also practicing Islam? Well, I realized that one of the biggest threats to reverts and other Muslims as well are other Muslims. So I would blame a little bit on social media. There are a lot of foul Muslims on social media who are not empathetic towards anyone anymore. And a big part of this is when uh, Muslims will continuously flood you with so much information and not all of this information is information that you should be taking in. Many people associate Islam with culture as well and think that their actions are better not only for themselves but for other Muslims as well. So once you're able to research and differentiate between people giving you righteous information versus like cultural bias then of course social media will be great to help you understand the religion better and interact with others on a more understanding level. Again keep your circle small and involve yourself with people you know are providing accurate information about the religion. My third tip would be intentions. So whether you are starting with only your fard prayers or opening the Quran one or two times a week, you have to understand why you're doing these actions. So understanding the things that are obligatory, you have to be obedient towards Allah when it comes to things that he made obligatory. You're not just doing, you're putting your heart and your mind into it and inshallah lot you will get more reward with the right intentions the fourth tip i would give you guys is obligatory versus voluntary there are so many things in islam that you have to do for the sake of allah and so many sunnah that we follow of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in my opinion i would suggest you to start with the fard first for example it makes no sense if you're doing sadaqah but you're not fulfilling your zakat or if you're looking into performing the sunnah and the nafil prayers but you're missing out on the further prayers so let's try to focus on the actions that are clearly stated by our prophet muhammad وسلم, or that are mentioned in the quran and when we have a routine established and a clear understanding of both of these differences then we can move on to the voluntary actions so you might be thinking now where do i start how do I gain knowledge about a religion that has been going for so long? And my answer is wherever you find the most interest. There are so many things in Islam that you have to start learning about. And there's so many things obviously that I don't even know of that I'm still researching. So maybe starting off, you might not be interested yet in the characteristics of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But maybe you're interested in like the jinn stories. But always know Islam is fully connected. You learning about the jinns can lead you to learning about shaitan and iblis, which can lead you to learn about Adam salam, which is one of our first prophets. And then through Adam, you will get to know all of the other prophets. And then our final prophet, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and his wives and the sahabas and so on. So never limit yourself and don't be devastated if your path to Islam is not the same as someone else's because most of the time they will be completely different like your path will be completely different from mine and mine will be completely different from the next person's and also remember that the sahaba didn't change their lives all together at once it happened step by step with every revelation remember there is no person who knows everything there will always be someone who has a little more knowledge than you and there will always be something that you can learn. So lastly, I would highly recommend for weavers and Muslims to check out the sources while conducting your research. If you're speaking to your friends about a topic or discussing something with a stranger, always ask what their source is, where they're getting their research from, who did they get this information from. Now, obviously, if you're listening to a known scholar and you don't necessarily have to go up to them at the end of their lecture and ask, hey, well, what was your source? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> But know that you can trust whoever that you're getting information from. Again, Arabic is a very complex language and very hard to understand at times. So if you're not understanding a topic in the Quran, maybe you can go to your trusted scholar and listen to their understanding of it, like a YouTube lecture about what the topic in the Quran is about. 
Again, intentions matter. Allah Ta'ala is very merciful and very loving. He is seeing all the effort that you're putting in into making yourself a better Muslim. So don't ever regret your past. Just stay focused on making a better future for yourself. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's topic. Also, I want you guys to mention in the comments what is helping you right now become a better Muslim. You know, who knows? Maybe someone can take your suggestion and it'll be helpful to them as well. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video and I leave you in the care of Allah. Bye!